Good morning and welcome to morning prayer. Today, Friday the 8th of May 2020, we are still in the season of Easter. Uh, and this morning we celebrate the feast of Julian of Norwich, one of England's greatest spiritual figures. And here is an extract from the book uh, Exciting Holiness, which has a snippet on the life of Julian of Norwich, and this is what it says. On this day in the year 17, 1373, when she was 30 years old and suffering from what was considered to be a terminal illness, a woman of Norwich, whose own name is unrecorded, experienced a series of 16 visions which revealed aspects of the love of God. Following her recovery, she spent the next 20 years of her life pondering their meaning and recording her conclusions in what became her first in what became the first book written by a woman in English the revelations of divine love at an unknown point in her life she became an anchoress attached to the church of st julian in norwich and it was by this name of julian that she came to be known to later generations she died around the year 1417 We continue in prayer. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let earth and heaven rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever, as you once ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land. So now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive in God, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night is past and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The psalm designated is Psalm 33. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for it is good for the just to sing praises. Praise the Lord with a lyre, on the ten-stringed harp, sing his praise. Sing for him a new song. Play skillfully with shouts of praise, for the word of the Lord is true, and all his works are sure. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the one of the loving kindness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all their host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers up the waters of the sea as in a water skin and lays up the deep in his treasury. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Stand in awe of him who dwell in the world. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to naught.
he frustrates the designs of the peoples, but the counsel of the Lord shall endure forever and the designs of his heart from generation to generation. Happy the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people he has chosen for his own. The Lord looks down from heaven, and beholds all the children of earth. From where he sits enthroned, he turns his gaze. On all who dwell on the earth, he fashions all the hearts of them, and understands all their works. No king is saved by the might of his host. No warrior delivered by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. For all its strength it cannot save. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him. On those who wait and hope for his steadfast love. To deliver their soul from death and to feed them in the time of famine. Our soul waits longingly for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Indeed, our heart rejoices in him. In his holy name have we put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us, as we have set our hope on you. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. Feed your people, Lord, with your holy word, and free us from the emptiness of our wrongful desires, that we may sing the new song of salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Exodus, beginning at chapter 35, verse 20, and reading through to chapter 36, verse 7. Then all the congregation of the Israelites withdrew from the presence of Moses. As they came, everyone whose heart was stirred and everyone whose spirit was willing and brought the Lord's offering to be used for the tent of meeting and all its service for the sacred vestments. So they came, both men and women, all who of willing heart bought brooches and earrings and signet rings and pendants, all sorts of gold objects, everyone bringing an offering of gold to the Lord. And everyone who possessed blue or purple or crimson yarn or fine linen or goat's hair or tanned ramskins or fine leather brought them. Everyone who could make an offering of silver or bronze brought it as the Lord's offering. And everyone who possessed acacia wood of any use in the work brought it. All the skillful women spun with their hands and brought what they had spun in blue and purple and crimson yarns and fine linen. All the women whose hearts were moved to use their skills spun the goat's hair. And the leaders brought onyx stones and gems to be set in the ephod and the breastpiece, and spices and oil for the light, and for the anointing oil, and for the fragrant incense. All the Israelite women and men whose hearts made them willing to bring anything for the work of the Lord, had commanded by Moses to, uh, the Lord had commanded by Moses to be done, brought it as a free will offering to the Lord. Then Moses said to the Israelites, See, the Lord has called by name Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. He has filled him with the divine spirit, with skill, intelligence, and knowledge in every kind of craft, to devise artistic designs to work in gold, silver, and bronze, in cutting stones for setting, and in carving wood of every kind of craft. And he has inspired him to teach both him and Aholiab, an artisan, or by a designer, or by an embroider, sorry, uh, Holiab, son of Ahisamach of the tribe of Dan. He has filled them with skill to do every kind of work done by an artisan, or by a designer, or by an embroiderer in blue, purple, and crimson yarns, and in fine linen, or by a weaver, by any sort of artisan or skilled designer. Bezalel and Aholiab and everyone skillful to whom the Lord had given skill and understanding to know how to do any work in the construction of the sanctuary shall work in accordance with all that the Lord has commanded. Moses then called Bezalel and Aholiab and everyone skilled to whom the Lord had given skill, everyone whose heart was stirred to come to do the work, and they received from Moses all the freewill offerings that the Israelites had brought for doing the work on the sanctuary. 
they still kept bringing him free will offerings every morning so that all the artisans who were doing every sort of task on the sanctuary came, each from the task being performed, and said to Moses, the people are bringing much more than enough for doing the work that the Lord has commanded us to do. So Moses gave command and word was proclaimed throughout the camp. No man or woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing for what they had already brought was more than enough to do all the work. Here ends the first reading. The canticle is a song of the new creation. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord who made a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters. Remember not the former things, nor consider things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I form for myself, that they may declare my praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The second reading is taken from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 4, reading from verse 14 to verse, to verse 30. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed upon him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at his gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will swear, say, Do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly, I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel at the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up for three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land, yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel at the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of a hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. Here ends the second reason, reading. <clears throat> Here ends the second reading. The Responsory. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your sting? Christ has risen from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpets will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, O death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your sting? The Benedictus. They who wait upon the mountain shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. Alleluia. Blessed be Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. 
This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins and the tender compassion of our God. The dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. Alleluia. We now have our prayers of intercession. In response to my words, Lord, hear us. Can you please reply, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the day and its tasks. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to help us to order our lives and make them productive, even though we're in lockdown and constrained by our lives at home. We pray that we will, use, we will use this opportunity to do all the things that normally we wouldn't do, but need to be done nevertheless. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to reconnect with our loved ones and with the good earth on which God has placed us. And we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful village of Berkswell and this wonderful rectory garden, which is resplendent in the morning light. We also pray the world and its needs. And it's become a bit of a cliche, Lord, to say that the world has changed irrevocably. But we nevertheless pray that we would take wonderful opportunities that this crisis has offered to change the way we live in order to help us cultivate a more peaceful, more just, more connected and more rooted lives, imagining a world which is full of possibilities. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the church and her life. And although, Lord, um, some restriction, re restrictions will be lifted from the churches, we will probably not be able to worship again together in any number this year. And therefore, we pray that you would help us to so organize our worship and our communications virtually that we might keep in connection with those who are already part of our congregation but forge new connections with those who are not. We pray, Lord, that we would share all our good ideas and that this will be a real time of inventiveness, imagination and synergy. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray, Lord, for those who suffer in body, mind and spirit. And in the silence of our hearts, we commend to God those known particularly to us. We pray for the bereaved. We pray, Lord, for the family and friends of John Waitley whose funeral service was held on Monday. For the family and friends of David Pike, in particular Eunice and Simon and John, following the funeral of David on Wednesday. We pray, Lord, for those whose anniversary, uh, sorry, we also pray for Helen Hope and her family following Robin's burial last week. And for the family and friends of Brenda Blake, Caroline Varney's mother, who was also, 
whose funeral service was also held last week. And we also pray, Lord, for the family and friends of Nicola Child, whose anniversary of death we commemorate this week. We lift up to you with all our love and all our support, Paul and Virginia Child and Nicola's sister, Amanda. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. The Collect of the Day. Most holy God, the ground of our beseeching, who through your servant Julian revealed the wonders of your love, grant that as we are created in your nature and restored by your grace, our wills may be so made one with yours that we may come to see your face and gaze on you forever. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.